Good evening again, councillors, and welcome to this ordinary meeting of the council. So a warm welcome to our ordinary meeting, uh, to those members of the public uh, who are in, in the attendance in the public gallery, and also those who are watching us online. This meeting is being webcast, so please speak clearly into your microphones. While we're still standing, I'm just going to call upon Councillor Tony Norbury. Thank you, Mr Mayor. It's that time of year again where us as councillors show our uh, support for Show Races in the Red Car, which is an initiative uh, through football to eradicate racism and hate crime. Um, the people who run uh, Show red, Races in the Red Car are going around football clubs at the moment, educating primary school children to eradicate racism and hate crime. Could I ask all councillors to hold up? The show race of the red car car, and can I ask people to take as many photographs as they can to show that we are solidarity against racism. So, item 
item two, Mayor's announcements. Um, do we have any apologies at this meeting? Councillor Abbey. Councillor Jill Wood, she's had to go because of standing close. Thank you. Councillor Phil Davis. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, Councillor Moyne McLaughlin. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Mike Sullivan and Councillor Bill Davis. Thank you. Any further apologies? No. So, under item two, I have the following announcements to make. Um, I have been asked to mention that next Monday, the 25th of March 2019, 6.30pm at the top of Bedrington Road Precinct and 6.50pm at the Bowling Green on Surgery Drive, there is an event into the light, an evening of reflection and hope, looking forward to a new and brighter future, marking the anniversary of the explosion in New Ferry, showing the resilient community spirit that continues to shine in New Ferry and Port Sunlight. Expected to finish about 8 p.m. So that is next Monday, 25th of March 2019, 6.30 p.m. in New Ferry. Next, uh, very pleasant duty is to the, come to the presentation of the Andy Day Memorial Award. This was established in honour of the late Andy Day and is awarded annually to a backbench member of the council who has demonstrated the qualities of dedication and selflessness possessed by the former councillor. The recipient is chosen by the mayor. I've decided to present the award this year to a member who will shortly have given 19 years service to the council and the people of <coughs> the world. Mainly as a backbencher, but occasionally as a committee chairman and briefly as a member of the cabinet. I'm sure that I'm not alone in regretting that he is one of our colleagues who will not be seeking re-election this year. I have been privileged to witness his dogged and determined pursuance of residence issues with officers throughout the authority, and I know he's held in great respect by many, both inside and outside the council. I'm sure that by now many of you will have guessed to whom I have been referring. So it is now my pleasure to invite Councillor David Elderson to step forward and receive the
Uh, we will agree matters by assent or use a show of hands for any vote required to that point. So item three is the minutes. Turning to item three, the minutes of the Budget Council held on 4th of March 2019, contained within pages 1 to 26 of the Agenda Supplement Pack. I will move approval of these minutes as a correct, correct record. Do I have a second? Second, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bill Davis. If there is no objection, can we agree the minutes by a set? Agreed. Thank you. I believe that's unanimous. <coughs> Petition referred to Council in accordance with Standing Order 34 
as shown at pages one to four of the agenda papers pack. That's pages one to four of the agenda papers pack. The petition organiser, Mr. Phil Spencer, has been invited to address the council for up to five minutes before we consider the matter for up to 15 minutes and determine a response. Mr. Spencer. and members of the council. For thousands of people to show that they care for the future of a modest car park speaks volumes of how critical an issue it is for them. They're all very aware that in Bromber Village our car park is our heart. It's our circulatory system which feeds people through our shops and businesses day after day. They understand that for us to have a free, uh, accessible car park of this size is essential to Bromborough's social and economic future. We are healthy and stable, but only just. Should this proposal survive, the effects would deliver a huge blow to Bromborough. We have to think that the decision to include a car park in the local plan is born out of thrift rather than diligence. And we think this because prior to the decision, no study was done of how effective the car park actually is at doing its job. There was no evaluation of the problems we'd experienced once it's gone. And so there was no action uh, plan form for addressing those problems when they arise. We can say this with some confidence because it's only what the planning office tells us. When we asked for evidence of these things, we were told no further studies or details appear to be available. The decision process, therefore, I feel lacks rigour. And by including it in the local plan, you've alarmed an entire community. Alarm that's turned to anger, but also bewilderment at how the blatantly obvious could be ignored in such an important issue. We spent hours, weeks and months fighting what looks to be not much more than a speculative punt of an idea. It's a proposal that suggests that the only factors considered are the revenue it generates and the new housing that follows. We understand that these are factors, but they're not the only factors. Well, the thrifty approach may have paid off because we've done the research and as for all the work we do, there is no charge. We counted the cars we've counted the spaces and we've done the maths and the planning office has our report and our conclusion well it's a great cover in fact it's perfect it fits Bromborough like a glove it's always full but never quite is it just copes nicely and in doing so makes everyone's visit to Bromborough a good experience and not a parking nightmare what problems will it cause when we lose it? Well, our figures suggest that throughout the day, upwards of 100 cars will be looking for a non-existent parking space somewhere around the village. Until they give up, and don't come back. And then we have a more serious problem. What might you help? What help might you give us to ease our inevitable parking crisis? Well, quite honestly, we have no idea, other than to build another car. At a time nationally when many town centres are under pressure, there are calls from all sides to give them some help. One idea is to make parking easier within them. Increase the provision, de-restrict it or make it free. It may cost money, but at least the ideas are constructive and make sense. There's no suggestion <coughs> of building on the car parks is the road to salvation. At the time locally, when with one hand you talk commendably of regenerating Birkenhead and New Ferry, there is a danger that with the other, you're taking a step towards sending Bromborough on its own downward spiral to become tomorrow's regeneration problem. A reminder, if I may, of what was said about five years ago from the Bromborough Village District Centre Retail Action Plan. And I quote from the summary. By 2016, Bromborough Village will be thriving like never before. Local residents and communities 
will be proud to play their part in sustaining improvements and in promoting Bromborough Village life to increased numbers of visitors. We would do well to make sure they got somewhere to park when they come. Finally, we very much hope that with a new optimism regarding the use of brownfield sites, that a reprieve for our car park is that much closer. If not, with the greatest respect, we must ask you to drop this proposal for the reasons that we've outlined. But please, do it soon. Relieve us from the worry that we've carried for months, and at the same time leave Bromley Village to thrive. I suggested it should. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Can I now invite any member to comment on the petition before us? <laughs> Councillor Cherry Pope. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to support this petition. The threat of the removal of the car park in Bromborough has caused a great deal of concern in Bromborough. Faced with the vast amount of free parking on the croft, the small businesses in the village have struggled to keep alive a thriving shopping offer, and this is in no short measure due to the availability of free parking. It would be nothing short of criminal if this car park is subsumed in the local plan. It would be a short-term gain for a long-term disaster. I have no doubt that Bramber Village would die and become another street of metal shutters. This must not be allowed to happen. Our villages on Wirral are our lifeblood. If we lose Bromborough, that will be the start of the rot. We say, see how new ferry is fed. We cannot allow Bromborough to end up with unused and derelict shops. The car park must be left alone to support the small business in Bromborough and allow them to prosper. Thank you. Mr. Stuart Halliday, Mr. Brian Bailey and myself 
were in correspondence in 2017 and 18 about this proposal when I tried to lay down some of the concerns local people would have. Sad to say, um, that was not recognised at the time because there were ideas that local people were not consulted about. I do have a form of words like Councillor Blakely that I would like to move at the appropriate time. But I believe, despite the provision of the timetable for local plan, this council should give an early indication of its continuing support for that community and its shopping centre. Thank you. Catherine Lewis. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and can I thank uh, Mr. Spencer for the uh, email and the attachments that he sent to many of us uh, over the last week or so. Uh, Mr. Mayor, like many of us, we represent areas with small uh, shopping centres that rely on these small free car parks, uh, which is why so many of us were against uh, proposals a couple of years ago to introduce parking fees in those particular areas because of the impacts they would have on those small retail areas. Having uh, worked for a number of years on the Croft Business Park, uh, I often used to go to the Bromber Village uh, as my destination of choice uh, because not only was the parking free like the Croft, but I thought the shops were better. That was my own personal view. Uh, but I think on this one, Mr. Mayor, as we've heard from the cabinet member of the environment tonight <coughs> already, she took uh, what she said was swift action to kick what had clearly been a mistake uh, out, of, out of the course. I think whichever cabinet member wants to take responsibility for this tonight, they could do the same tonight and give Mr. Spencer and his colleagues and the petitioners the reassurance that this particular car park will not be sold for development and will remain as an integral part of a successful thriving local village in Bromborough. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to support this and I'd like to thank Bill Spencer for his, uh, his speech. I and mean, there's a lot of research on this. Um, two years ago, Bromborough Council argued to the, to the car park to, to be free of charges because it's so close to Bromborough Croft, retail Croft, and um, which does have free car parking. And um, they, would, they have to compete with them. There's approximately 50 uh, businesses in Bromborough Village. And not only do the changes in the shop that use the car park would come and use to live at home. A short distance from Robert Station, there's no car park at the station. So the only place to park is on the road or in front of the shops down there, and it's a manual road. The village car park is constantly busy. I've seen some of the comments from people who signed the petition and I share their concerns, and I feel strongly that we must leave the car park as it is. So I've come up with the aid of council officers, sent emails, spoke to people in the village and been involved in meetings. The petition was put forward in October, to, towards the end of the local plan consultation, so that the comments could be, it contained, could be added to the consultation. But as the petition grew, it gained enough signatures to qualify the debate at council. The kinds of sites on the which could be used to build residential properties without the need to use a valuable Parking space, all green belt. One of my first memories when I came on the council nearly nine years ago is the presentation given by Peer Holdings, complete with glossy brochures of the developments they were planning for Widow Waters. Peer promised to build 13,000 residential properties, mm -hmm. the government are asking for 12,000 after more meetings and less from. To my knowledge, she hasn't built any residential. After all meetings, some better smiles from the government. They've recently acquired planning commission for some residential apartments, but they've also reduced the pledge to build residential to a fraction of the 13,000. They've had a number of planning commissions which they've allowed to expire after a three year period in which they've not started to build on the committed site. Planning law is weak in this respect. This allows developers to leave land in an undeveloped and unkempt state indefinitely, which also attracts flight tipping. Change in the law is needed. In the meantime, we need to protect local shopping areas like on the village so that they can continue to Mr. Mayor, I was going to make a contribution, but it would be extremely helpful if we heard 
the wording of the motion. So, so we can we can make a decision. Can I just tell you one more speaker and then come to ask the two the two motions? Oh, two more speakers. Did you want to speak, Councillor Kruger? Thank you, Councillor. Um, I noticed that there was a lot of conversation going on in the cabinet there when these guys were giving their reports. I couldn't hear even you sitting in front of me because you guys were all chatting. <coughs> I'm really annoyed by that. Yeah. This car park is really important to them. Yeah. Yeah. If this car park is really important to them, if this yeah, car, park goes, if the park, car park goes, if the car park goes, it will kill Brom Reds and Dunnets completely. And that's a community that we're building. We're building 200 odd houses right next to those. And just as an interest, it's been mentioned about the Croft Park with free parking. The Croft is now having a drive through cost of coffee. It's also sold the grass opposite McDonald's and it's going to build another set of shops there. There's more shops going in than boots on. Yeah. Now there's going to be more and more people wanting to go to Bromer and shop in Bromer and away from the Croft because there's no parking in the Croft, even though it's free. You once you're in, you can't get out. Yeah. Yeah. So my concern is that in Bromer Village, where I grew up, been there since I was seven. Um, it's a community, and it's not going. It's not just the shopkeepers and the shops that we're going to lose. It's the community, the centre of the community is going to go. And my question is, what will go there instead? More houses, or will it just be as Councillor Powell's just said, more more roller shutters closed, painted and grey? So I, I'm urging you to, to leave it alone. I know, but I'm asking the cabinet member who has just taken this role. To make that decision, if you can do it, see them. If you can it, stability of Bromwood, a shopping area, council requests officers remove the car park from consideration in the local plan. And do you have a second, Second, Justin. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. So now, Councillor Gilchrist, would you like to move yours? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move the following, and based on what Councillor <coughs> Gilchrist said, I think we can usually discuss adding to his wording. What I've written down is, Council wishes to reassure the petitioners that Bromber is a highly valued district centre. Council recognises the strength of feeling and concern expressed by local people. Council believes that proper consultation should take place on any changes to the facilities valued by the community. Seconded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Uh, Mr. Mayor, listen to the uh, director of the Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I was merely going to make a suggestion if uh, uh, councillors are in, in agreement to just insert the word cabinet and in front of council officers as formulation of the local plan is there. Yeah. 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 Councillor Kildare. Yeah, I would just request a five minute adjournment, please. Oh. 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 You're incompetent, oh. man. I agree, Councillor Davis. We'll have, have a five minutes of journal. We will resume at four minutes past seven. Thank you.